Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, a UAV pilot has settled his case with the FAA. Bill Harrelson's polar circumnavigation in Atlanta Air has been completed, and a Florida resident has sued the FAA. I'm ANN Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell, subbing in for an ailing Ashley Hale, who should be back among the living within a day or so, we hope. When Raphael Perka used his UAV to take pictures for the University of Virginia in 2011, the FAA said it was a commercial use of the UAV and in violation of the FARs. Perker had maintained that the rules were beyond the FAA's authority because it had not yet completed the rulemaking process. Facing a possibly lengthy court battle, at least in addition to the one he's already undertaken, and a $10,000 fine, Perker has decided to settle his case with the FAA by accepting a $1,100 fine, but admits no wrongdoing for flying a UAV near the university. In a settlement letter, the FAA lays out the details of its complaints, and for those reasons and others, the FAA determined that Perker, quote, operated an aircraft in a careless or reckless manner so as to endanger the life or property of another, unquote. The FAA also pointed out that Perker, quote, did not possess a Federal Aviation Administration pilot certificate, period, unquote. Not that there is such a thing as a UAV pilot certificate. Pilot Bill Harrelson has completed his attempt to circumnavigate the globe over both poles, landing back at Kinston Regional Jet Port at Stallings Field in Kinston, North Carolina, last Wednesday. Harrelson flew his Lance Air 4 November 6 Zebra Quebec, more than 22,000 nautical miles, facing and conquering some of our planet's least hospitable terrain and weather. In a media release, Harrelson's Team Lobo said the record attempt began when Bill left KISO on the morning of 28 December 2014, bound for Montevideo, Uruguay. It ended Wednesday afternoon with a nearly 5,000 nautical mile leg from Fairbanks, Alaska, over the North Pole to home. The new record won't be official until the data recorders are unsealed, studied, and certified, but Bill and his team are confident that they've followed all the rules. a and congratulates Harrelson for this remarkable accomplishment. After the break, a civil lawsuit has asked the FAA to mandate pilot liability insurance. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, just e- email it to news-spy at arrow-news.net. A resident of Palm Coast, Florida has sued the FAA for the loss of her home as well as medical expenses stemming from an accident which occurred on January 3rd, 2013. The home of Susan Crockett was substantially damaged and eventually had to be raised after it was impacted by an airplane attempting an emergency landing at Florida's Flagler County Airport. Ms. Crockett is seeking unspecified damages for the loss of her home, medical expenses, and other compensatory damages. It said the suit names the FAA in part to press the federal government to require all pilots to carry insurance to cover such accidents. There is no federal law requiring a pilot to carry liability or property damage insurance. However, it is not uncommon for airport sponsors to require such insurance for aircraft based on their airports. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Well, to be a Top Gun, you need to be a hotshot Navy fighter pilot, right? Well, in this video, we see that Navy fighters and even engines aren't necessarily needed to be a Top Gun. Search Top Gun 2 on YouTube and be prepared for some real interesting sailplane action. 
After these messages, Cub Crafters names a new company president. Does that mean I didn't get the job? There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Cub Crafters, as you all know, is a leader in the recreation of the popular Piper Cub. It's planned that leadership changes will keep it that way with the appointment of Randy Lervold to the position of company president. Lervold plans to keep the company strong and, darn it, I didn't get the job. The 2015 National Association of Broadcasters show to be held this April 11th to 16th will feature aerial robotics and a drone pavilion. UAVs are changing the face of news gathering and reporting as unmanned flying cameras are being placed into service. The first hearing by the Full House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee for the 114th Congress examined the process by which the FAA certifies new aircraft and other products. They're looking at unnecessary regulatory burdens imposed by the FAA. That should take a while. The FAA also continues to look for regulatory answers with the problem of sleep apnea. On March 2nd, they'll be issuing new medical guidance based on NTSB concerns regarding the issue of obstructive sleep apnea and the need for restorative sleep. Well, that's it for today's Around the Patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. House General Aviation Caucus co-chairs Sam Graves and Mark Beasy have announced the reorganization of the bipartisan House General Aviation Caucus for the 114th Congress. The caucus has 222 members, giving a strong majority in the House of Representatives. Representative Graves has said, in part, general aviation is not just about flying planes. It's about creating good paying jobs and economic opportunity, not only in states like Missouri and Texas, but all across the country. Representative Vesey said he looks forward to working with Congressman Graves to advance public knowledge and awareness about how important GA is to our economy industrial base, totaling more than $14 billion worth of impact in Texas and over $150 billion nationally. Obviously, actions speak louder than words, but we certainly welcome this sort of talk from Congress. Well, that's it. It's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And with luck, Ashley will be here. Uh, we're in the middle of a snowstorm, in the middle of Indiana, in the middle of nowhere, and having to put all this together. And, it, and once again, the crew at ANN just basically does what it has to do because, well, that's just the way we've always done it. It's been an amazing day. Hopefully this won't be too bad on uh, the folks out there. But just remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network. The Aviation World's most comprehensive news and information resource and certainly the most imaginative in the middle of a snowstorm. Take care, folks.